Dortman for our opening exercise. If y'all would stand, um, I'm not, we're not going to have a prayer today. I'm going to read a proclamation from the President of the United States. But first, I want to tell you what it's all about. Uh, June 14th is Flag Day, and this is um, Flag Week. So, to commemorate the adoption of our flag, the Congress, by joint resolution, of, approved August 3rd, uh, 1949 designated June 14th as Flag Day and requested that the President issue an annual proclamation calling for its observation, observance, I'm sorry, and the display of the flag um, of, in the United States on all federal government buildings. The Congress also requested by joint resolution um, that the President annually issue a proclamation designating the week in which June 4th occurs, which is this week, as National Flag Week, and call upon all citizens of the United States to display the flag during the week. So here is, I'll read you the proclamation. And this was written by the President. Now therefore I, Barack Obama, President of the United States of America, do hereby proclaim June 14, 2013 as Flag Day, and the week beginning June 9, 2013 as National Flag Week. I direct the appropriate officials to display the flag on all government, federal government buildings during that week, and I urge all Americans to observe Flag Day and National Flag Week by displaying the flag. I also call upon the people of the United States to observe with pride and all due ceremony those days from Flag Day through Independence Day, also set aside by the Congress, as a time to honor America, to celebrate our heritage in public gatherings and activities, and to publicly recite the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. So we have complied with the President's proclamation. So I invite you all to now say with me the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. the agenda as recommended by the superintendent um, under business and support services disposal of surplus property item Dell Power Edge T410 server has been removed from the list and in school operations B4 uh, the agreement between Citrus County School Board and Wipakuchi Technical Institute and the CCA of Tennessee LLC to provide GED computer-based training. There's just a name change there. And I'll, I'll move that to the agenda with the noted amendments. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 4-0. And now do we have any citizens' comments? Seeing none, presentations. Thank you, Mr. Potter. Good afternoon, members of the school board, assistant superintendent, Mr. Mullen, and school board attorney, Mr. Bradshaw. We are excited to bring to you to uh, recognition of a fine, uh, outstanding young man at Hernando Elementary School, Jacob Reynolds. And so to provide some background and some insight, newly appointed Laura Manos to Inverness Primary School, but yet talking about Hernando Elementary School, Laura Manos. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Uh, Nancy Haynes and Julie Kelsey were uh, away at a workshop, so they asked me if I could represent them today, and they are watching the sunlight, so I hope I do them justice. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Braille Challenge. It's a national program of the Braille Institute. It's hosted by regional schools and agencies that serve blind and visually impaired children. It is the only national Braille literacy competition of its kind in the country. And it's specifically designed to challenge and reward blind students for their study of Braille, which is essential to their future academic and employment success. The Braille Challenge encourages students with visual impairments 
from pre-K through grades 12 to be literate members of society. Reading print and comprehending it is an abstract form of learning. Like their sighted counterparts, Braille readers must have strong literacy skills in order to function in a world of words. Print is everywhere, and with the continued work of Braille advocates, teachers of the visually impaired, the Braille Challenge, and its volunteers and sponsors, Braille is becoming more accessible to the next generation of Braille readers. The Braille Challenge is an academic competition unlike any other. This two-stage contest is designed to motivate blind students to emphasize their study of Braille while rewarding their success with fun-filled but challenging events. Jacob was selected out of more than 1,000 preliminary round contestants from 39 states and three Canadian provinces. The 60 challengers are invited to compete in the Braille Challenge Finals that are held in Los Angeles on Saturday, June 22, 2013. Finalists represent the 12 top ranking scores from each of the five age groups. The reason we are here today is because in March, Jacob completed, competed in the Regional Braille Challenge in Tampa. He won first place in his group, earning him an iPod Touch with Siri, which allows him to independently access the internet and all other features of the iPod. Now I want to tell you a little bit about Jacob that I know. Jacob scored among the top 12 of all students in his age group and has been invited to compete in this challenge in Los Angeles. But as a fourth grade student, this year Jacob achieved a three in writing, reading, and math on FCAT. Wow. set up in Braille, and um, when I looked up his scores, I was very impressed. So. Um, he's, a, he's a perfect example of that saying that it takes a village to raise a child, um, and I commend the village of people that have worked with him, beginning with Jacob, who was he, when he was interviewed by the Chronicle, he stated, it's awesome to be blind. Just because you're blind doesn't mean that you can't do anything. So, I mean, that's a statement. Of course, I credit this attitude to his family who has supported Jacob's education <coughs> since his arrival at Hernando Elementary School in pre-K. And then there are his vision teachers, Kelly Aldrich and Karen Heddle. I recall one of my first days at Hernando Elementary School and I was sitting in a conference room and in the room next door I heard what sounded like muffled um, uh, machine gun, <laughs> like that. And so I was concerned, and I went, and I went around and went and opened up the door, and there, there were the teachers. Um, they were using a Braille machine to take what the teachers in the classroom were using and turning it into Braille for them. Wow. So I include them in his village of people. Um, the staff and students at Hernando Elementary are also members of Jacob's village, and they've always treated him like every other student with respect and admiration. So at this time, I would like to present to the board, Jacob Reynolds. Thanks for the opportunity to go to Brown Challenge for California. You're very welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Manish. You did do them proud. Uh, we need to approve the out-of-state travel for Jacob Reynolds, a student and Kelly Aldridge, visually impaired teacher, chaperone, to attend the 2013 National Braille Challenge Finals in Los Angeles, California, June 20th through the 23rd, 2013. We have a motion by Ms. Powers and a second by Ms. Georgeman. Do we have any further questions or comments? Did, did you get all your funding together? Are you still, you still have a little bit left? Yeah, there's, there's some more down okay. We'll be sure to include me in on the first one donating to you. Yeah, let, let one of us know so we can also get the word out too and we can all help. Yes, we can. 
board ready, willing, and able to help you. Very proud. I visited that room, and I was amazed. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 4 0. Thank you. And now the presentation of two aspiring teacher scholarships from the Citrus County Education Foundation. Hello, everyone. I'm Linda Rogers. I'm with Suncoast Schools Credit Union. And the aspiring teacher scholarship is giving to deserving individuals who work within the district and are going to school to earn their teaching degree. Suncoast Schools Federal Credit Union has been funding these scholarships since 2009, and to date, Suncoast has funded 16,000 $1,000 scholarships to deserving individuals. This year, we have two. Um, the first recipient is Heather Slusser. Come on up. Next one is Dawn Diaz. Oh sure. We need a motion to approve the consent agenda. <coughs> and Ms. Ferrari, would you like to read the donations? Yes. Oh, yeah, let's approve them. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Members of the board, we had several donations coming forward at this time. We had a thousand dollar donation to the Canton High School from the Drywell Group LLC. Another $500 donation to the Canto High School from TCG Community Outreach Inc. $1,000 donation to the Canto High School from Ellen Bailey Daily Properties of Citrus County Inc. $1,000 donation to Homosassa Elementary School from Women of Sugar Mill Woods Inc. $500 donation to Homosassa Elementary School from West Citrus Ladies of the Elk, number 2693. $2,000 donation to Homosassa Elementary School from David and Dorothy Trumpeter Endowment Fund. And a $500 donation to Emory's Primary School from Jeffrey Grove. That concludes our donations for this meeting. Thank you, Ms. Verderami. Okay, <coughs> business and support services. I don't see Ms. Radio here. She must think she's retiring or something. <laughs> I, uh, in, in light of her celebration today, and if today's her birthday, I told her to take the board meeting off. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good present. <laughs> so we have the uh, budget amendment number eight to approve, please. I uh, move approval for the request of approval of budget amendment eight for April 2013. Second. Do we have any questions or comments? Yeah, just some of the uh, highlights on the general fund. You'll see that we did make the, uh, the adjustment for the fourth calculation in the FEFP. And the big thing you'll see on appropriations is a little over a million dollars is what we appropriated for next year's textbooks. They buy them this year, and uh, it comes back to us in the FEFP, but we always kind of fund it a year early. And then in the food services, they did have an adjustment based on the increase in food prices, and everything else is a pretty much a... You know, revenue in and, and the appropriations going out so just a question on that too and, and it may be mr clogger that answers but it was a textbook is i know it's the and i can't remember this the senate bill that ended up getting approved but i i believe we have some flexibility now with with some of the yeah. or or dr g he's asleep over there. <laughs> don't wake him up let him rest <laughs> Yes. 
We are educational. In the middle, we're, in the, we're in the middle of a lot of uh, legislation and how the DOE is going to interpret a lot of that. We are. We have yet to receive technical assistance on those. There's no TAP yet. No, that is correct. But what we basically have learned is that there are basically two uh, processes in place for approval of textbooks in our in our in the state of Florida now, is that you can actually have the same format of which we've had, uh, where a district would actually have their own adoption process, which is what we have had. Uh, we have a, as our policy. We have a adoption process, and we include open stakeholders and we go through that. We can align ourselves with the schedule that's provided by the state and then the allocation is then provided to us. The state will continue to do their approval process at the state level. If we wanted to, we could actually divert from that. So if you recall, uh, board members, we looked at that instructional materials policy and we wanted to hold off until we actually got the language and the statute changes before we came in and actually made those changes. So we are gonna be working together in order to be able to bring you that policy change um, to the board once we get that tap. So are we still bound by the subject schedule that they do? No. Okay, so we, if we decided we that it. our need was that we could keep algebra one, we instead, or math series, we could then adopt something that maybe needed to re look at science. That is correct. Uh, we still are required to review materials and bring and, and use research-based, up-to-date materials in our classrooms. Uh, the schedule that's actually in place takes us through the science um, of that to be able to kind of co uh, coincide with the adoption of the implementation of the Common Core standards. So that schedule is right now, as you know, uh, you may not know, next year we've already started conversations. Dr. Geddes led us in a meeting the other day in gearing us up for the secondary math and language arts. Now, if you recall, we haven't had an adoption for language arts for 12 years. And so that has been our priority. Think back with me now. We went through this adoption before. We actually came up to the December, had all the materials identified. But then the state actually redefined the board's and the superintendent's ability to reallocate those funds. But because those, uh, if you recall, at that time, next-gen standards were written, and those books were, did not align to that. So we basically put that on the back burner. That is a lot of work. Yes, it was. Uh, some materials were actually adopted. Like we went to class set at the middle school level for both writing and literature. And then we did some, do some novels and purchases at the high schools. But this is what's going to really actually impact our ELA uh, Common Core standards in this adoption at the secondary level. In that amount of the one million eighty-five or so, is that any of that fall into the fifty percent that has to be allocated for digital, or is that the subsequent year after that? I believe it's the subsequent. Now, if you remember, that fifty percent has always been available to us in regards to the approval or uh, going with approved. So if we wanted to deviate that, but I, I think I've told the board before, through our adoption process, we've been way up into the 90% going with materials that are approved by the state of Florida for using those no, technologies I that, are, that are digital. But that's, that's I believe it was 2015, 2016. So, so this map is here. not gonna, it, it, it's not, we, no. we have more discretion at this point. Yes. Yeah, it's optional this year. It's and and next, and year, and next year required. won't be. Okay, that was my question. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any more questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries 4 0. Thank you, Mr. Blacker. Thank you. Uh, we need to, Johnny Bishop, we need to approve the instructional and support recommendations. Do you have a motion? I move to approve. Second. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Do we have any questions or comments? Minute. Okay. Mr. Bishop, with the uh, Announcements of Marion County, yes, sir. Um, and their challenges. How is that creating any challenges for us? Are we starting to see some influx? Of We're seeing the, uh, any increase in interest in Citrus County. 
from those people from Marion County. How many people did they lay off? I think it was like 160. Yeah, I think it was, yeah. But 160, I think, were instructional, new instructional units. That's correct. Was this budget, budget related or uh, FTE related, do you know? Yeah. Budget. So they didn't get as much money as, I guess, uh, the newspapers were relaying to everyone that everybody was getting more money than less money. And I believe they talked about spending down their reserve. Yes. Played a factor. Um, are our positions, I think first they were kind of done in-house? Yes, sir, that's correct. Okay, so that's, and that's still going on where well, actually, we've opened them up now to beyond. We've opened them up. Yes, sir. Okay. How many other positions do we have? At this time, Ms. Wayne, do you have that off the top of your head? No, I do not. I can get that information email it to you. Uh, okay. see that. Just as an example. It's very fluid this time of year. We forced Rich had an open teaching position. She had 48 applicants. Wow. Oh. That's what I think we're trying to understand. That's not been the case. 48. Now, just because that is a, a, a much more labor intensive to go through some of that, is, is there still like we have a screening process? They, they, they screen themselves at that point. That's correct. Wow. We screen at the district for administrators. For the administrators. Is the Skyward system, you know, because now that's automated, and is that helping that process at all? Where, where like for example, then when this Principals have to screen. Is that being easier because they don't have to go through the paper as much? Or? Yes, sir. The the application is um, very comprehensive uh, in terms of past uh, work history and as well as uh, if there was any kind of um, background issues we may be made aware of. Uh, the the application now is forwarded on to the. Or I'm sorry, excuse me. The administrator has access to the application online, so they can go through and they can look at all aspects of the, each applicant um, through the screening process. And there, are there any tools within that that help them in that screening? I mean, can they filter based on, I want to see all applicants that, you know, have a, master's. right, exactly, that's exactly what I was thinking, that they have a master's degree. And so Skyward does have filters, um, but in terms of fast track, that's the part of Skyward that manages our application system. Are you no. aware of anything like no. that? To my knowledge, I'm not aware of anything, um, any functionality of Skyward in that regard. Thank you, Mr. Bishop. Yes, sir. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Do we have any further questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 4-0. Uh, before we approve Alice Harrell as principal of Citrus <laughs> uh, Springs Elementary School, I will be abstaining from voting pursuant to Florida Statute 112.3143 as I perceive a potential conflict in this matter. <laughs> well, since I don't, if it's uh, if no one objects, I would like to move that we approve Miss uh, Alice Harold as principal of Citrus Springs Elementary School, effective July first, two thousand thirteen. Double second. Double second. <laughs> <laughs> so for this. And do we have any questions or comments for Miss Harold? Godspeed. <laughs> <laughs> And with your for, uh, fellow uh, former cohort behind you there, um, <laughs> great success too with your scores that have come through. Um, it just continues to show the team that you've built there. Your mother is now going to sign relief here. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries three zero. <laughs> Okay, we need to approve Renee Johnson, principal of Rock Crusher Elementary. Second. We have a motion by Ms. Powers and a second by Ms. Deutschman. Do we have any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries 4-0. We need to approve Melissa Zanuski, assistant principal at Christopher High School, effective July 1st, 2013. I move approval of Melissa 
Zanuski. Zanuski at uh, Assistant Principal of Crystal River High, effective July 1st, 2013. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Kennedy and a second by Ms. Powers. Do we have any questions or comments? All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Motion carries 4 0. We need to approve Janet Tuggle, Assistant Principal, Christopher River High School, effective July 1st, 2013. I'll move approval of Janet Tuggle, Assistant Principal, Christopher River High School, effective July 1st, 2013. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Deutschman, a second by Mr. Kennedy. Do we have any questions or comments? I do. Why is Christopher River High School getting two new APs? Only one left. Mom was on the staffing plan that they had not filled previously. But their enrollment's going up or not going up? It is going up. Going up. I think now that most of the three schools are within a hundred of each other in one one way, one direction or another, right? Yeah, pretty close. Wow. I was going to say they're pretty balanced. I think at this point, I think there's a hundred less at Crystal River than Lacanto and uh, all right at Citrus, and then there's a hundred more at Lacanto than Citrus. So. Now we're going to have three APs at Crystal River High School. How many APs at Citrus? Three still, and how many at three Lacanto? And three and two deans. Say that again, there's no dean at Crystal River? There isn't right now. Not right now. That's okay. Right. So they're actually down by two. By staffing plan. By staffing plan. One, one but by three. one dean. Okay, sir. Any more questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 4 0. We need to approve the appointment of administrative personnel for 2013 14. I move approval of administrative personnel for 2013-2014. We have a motion by Mr. Kennedy and a second by Ms. Powers. Do you have any questions or comments? Yeah, I don't believe that we approved uh, Mr. Hilker as a principal of Citrus High School. It's a transfer, isn't it? That is true. It, it is a transfer, but that should come before the board as a, uh, as a transfer. transfer. We also haven't approved Mr. Johns as a personal renaissance center. That's correct. If you notice on the administrative personnel sheet, they're included in the transfer journey. I know. That's what I'm saying. We're yes, approving this, but we have not approved their recommendation into those positions. It's, it's my understanding, since that's a lateral move, by virtue of approving the, the list of administrative personnel, that would that would count or suffice for that, uh, that approval for both those moves. When will we be the director of the secondary? Mm -hmm. What's the time frame on that? I'll, I'll defer that to Ms. Simmel when she comes back because that's not the first. The director, but secondary? Secondary. But is it principal of Crest the same pay grade level as the principal of high school? No, no. actually, the principal of high school is a um, is one step above. So it's, one, it's only one different? Yes, I think we have a, we have a uh, wiggle room on Tico 2. A transfer can be made uh, maybe without uh, board approval within two. That I'm not familiar with. Transfer is not effective until July. I think what he's saying is this: approving this approves the transfer. Is that right? Correct. Uh, Mr. Bradshaw, for clarification, though, a transfer does not. And I remember this just from my board training. I thought a transfer does not require board approval. Right. It's, a it's, it's a transfer as long as it stays within two days. That's our is that it is okay so we our policy does have two pay grade okay I, I, think, I think it used to be four and then we had a superintendent that was pretty liberal with that so i think we made it two <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this superintendent. Hmm. you know also just for clarification too or, or for the public to know and i think miss powers or somebody just mentioned about the secondary director yes. we show because I know we sometimes, I think, unfairly get criticized for being top heavy. We have three open positions, uh, director positions at the very top. Uh, we are, have currently been, uh, our teams have been doing that work with those three people less. And I think there's, that's, while there's been different um, positions in there, we've been pretty much down three executive uh, or directorships for some time now. 
So I, I say that because we know that, that we've been able to triage and get through. We have not been, in my opinion, top heavy. We have been uh, doubling up on, on the work. And I you know, say that because I know our executive, uh, our assistant superintendents, our executive directors have been uh, taking a, a lot of work on. Our directors up here have. And as I have said, anybody who wants to visit um, Ed Services, I'd be happy to show them the empty offices that we have, whether they are empty because the people are at the schools or because we have reduced those positions. As you said, people are taking over uh, the work yep. of the positions that are empty. So, so many people in the plot are certainly right there at the top are working very, very hard to do that. I'm hoping we'll get a secondary uh, director I think Mr. Because I say Mr. Clauder's been doing his old job. I think between secondary and his current job, and has been. Uh, Some others. I was going to say before Mr. Uh, Hebert had come on. I think Mike Mullen and he were splitting duties yeah. at times there. I'm sorry, Ms. Deutschman. You, if I used to may have still had something too. Oh. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 4-0. We need to approve um, the appointment of instructional personnel for 2013-2014. Now these are people that are not on the contract. That's right, that's right, in your contract. We do this every year now. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And by virtue of there not being any professional service contract offered after July 1, 2011, this, this list will get continued longer. I know. I know this, this was a little short, but we have more teachers than that. Okay, so I'll move approval of the um, appointment of instructional personnel for 2013-2014. Second. Thank you. Um, we have a motion by Ms. Georgeman, a second by Ms. Powers. Do we have any questions or comments? I did learn something. I questioned my name of it because I caught, thought that person was on a continuing contract, and I found that if, if uh, you leave the school system to go to a another system, and you know, and you're employed, not a school system, but another, then you lose the continuing contract. You can't get it back. You can't just take a year off. That's, cor off. that's correct. If there's any kind of break in service, uh, you relinquish your professional service contract. So. Hmm. Is there anyone that has gone and chosen, and, and maybe this isn't in our district yet, but I think there was hope that the, the legislators were thinking somebody might choose become on annual contract because they would be able to receive more well, because theoretically that as the steps get approved they have to be greater than that, that's PSC. correct the uh, new pay scale will have to be bargained through the union and once that pay scale is um, agreed upon and in place there may be some staff members who may make that may opt for uh, the relinquishing of their professional service contract to go to a uh, performance pay uh, schedule and doesn't that take effect July 1st of 2014 that's my understanding yes ma'am a question I had uh, someone asked, they are a PSC employee and applied for a job at another school in our district that's a term job. If that job, and they get hired for that job, and that job does not have a term, they don't, there's not a need for that position next year, they haven't lost their PSC, is that correct? No, sir, it's funny you actually bring that up because uh, Mr. Muller and I actually met on that exact um, concept this morning. Promise, no, we weren't talking. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, actually, I brought it to him. Um, ultimately, we owe them a job within our district. That term is just for that position at that school at that time. But they would not really consider a professional service contract for that. Thank you for that clarification. Yes, sir. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries 4 0. We need to approve the appointment of support personnel for 2013-2014. I move approval of the support personnel for 2013-2014. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Kennedy and a second by Ms. Deutschman. Do we have any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries 4-0. We need to approve the support personnel for summer school 2013. Possible, right? it's not always that is correct. That's just so they get their name on the list where they're eligible uh, to be hired to work in summertime. And then to approve the uh, support personnel for summer school 2015. Second. 
Thank you. We've got a motion by Ms. Powers and a second by Mr. Kennedy. Do we have any questions or comments? Yeah, where are we having summer school this, this summer? Is this going to be ESE only? Well, there, we had at Citrus Springs Elementary. I was there. Um, Ms. Wainer, you were familiar with other schools? I'm not sure which schools that usually three or four schools combine and have it at those schools. They have it for third grade and ESOL at the schools and then Crest houses it for ESE. So we're doing just reading? Yes, for those students that scored a one, those third graders that scored a one have been invited to come to summer school. Yes. And then will they be allowed to have some sort of alternative assessment that may get them out of the other That is correct. Prison? Yes. Is <laughs> Cat Jail? Got it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Do we have any further questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye, motion carries 4 0. We need to approve the transportation staff for summer employment. You skipped the instruction. Oh, did I? Support. No, we did that. You just did you support. Did. You just did the instruction for staff for summer school. I believe that was support, if I'm not mistaken. That was support. Oh, yeah. Should be number 10. So we need to go back and do nine? Yes, sir. Thank you. I'm so confused. Um, Ms. Powers made the motion. Mr. Kennedy seconded it. It's going over here to the right since I'm confused. <laughs> All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries 4 0. Uh, are we at number 11 now, Mr. That's correct. You, you don't have any idea how the meticulous notes she takes on who made the motion and who seconded it, so I would, I'm always yeah. right? yes. going <laughs> she, she wrote it down, it happened. <laughs> okay, we need to approve the transportation staff for summer employment 2013 as a need for ESY and extra duty. I move approval of transportation staff for summer employment 2013 as needed for ESY, what is ESY and extra duty? Um, extended school year, yeah, yeah, summer school. Extended school year. Uh, Ms. Dorchman made the motion. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Powers. All those in favor? Uh, aye. Aye. Motion carries 4 0. Number 12. <laughs> we need to approve the funding for the 2013 2014 school year term positions. I move approval for funding for the 2013 2014 school year term positions. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Second. Thank you, Ms. Deutschman. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries 4 0. We need to approve three new term units with the Coochie Technical Institute for three teacher aid positions. And I do believe that Ms. Willis explained those to us last time. Yeah. I move to approve three new term units with Coochie Tech for the three teacher aid positions. Thank you, Ms. Powers. Yes, sir. Mr. Kennedy. All those in favor? Hi. Hi. Motion carries 4 0. Budget update. Yeah, before we do the budget update, if you don't mind, I would like to extend an invitation to the board members for our new teacher orientation on July 29th at Emerus Middle School. I sent you an email today with a um, memo outlining the specifics, but um, breakfast will be served from 7 30 to 8, and introductions will begin at 8 o'clock in the cafeteria at Emerus Middle School. Um, we'd love for everybody to be here if your schedule allows. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Get a handout. Uh, yeah, I just want to share the property appraiser in reference to next year's budget. And the appraisal will be uh, the entire budget. <coughs> Sorry. In essence, it uh, explains that through their new appraisal, um, that the increase actually represents about 11.27% taxable value over last year because the value of the power plant exceeded even his own expectations. I believe, I believe he thought it was a lot higher, but this even exceeded even more. So, um, where, where has he been with all of this for the last 10 years? I think they work on kind of a good faith handshake agreement with the tax returns, quite honestly, I think. Um, so this was a good sign that they looked at uh, actually physically viewing the, the property and look at the appraisal. 
On the second page, though, he does give kind of a worst case scenario um, as to if Duke does indeed do what they did uh, this past year, that then it would go down by 16.11%. So we just need to be cognizant of, of the, uh, once again, the issue. I have sent this to DOE and in communication with them and asked them to run a scenario. Mm -hmm. Say if this happens by these numbers, how is it going to affect us? I'm still waiting for the results. I figured it would have been an easy ask, plug in the formula, but uh, I'm still waiting. I will actually see them next week. So I'll follow up with them and see what they can tell me. So I want to let you know that. Also, um, <coughs> when I presented to you the FEFP the last uh, couple weeks ago in the budget update, one of the questions was about, about the impact of the virtual school. And after that meeting, we did get guidance from DOE. It already actually has been calculated in the FEFP. So they have calculated an extra 180 uh, students would be, or you know, FTE through the uh, FEFP. So they've already actually made a forecast on what that calculation will be. So it's, we don't have to budget anything extra. It's already being budgeted through the FEFP is what I'm trying to tell you. So or the virtual school. school. So they, but they, and how, so what's the dollar amount then? Um, if you look at about. If you say 100 the, students? Yeah. And look, so 100 students by the full FTE? 350, 400,000. That's what it is. That's how many students, yeah. That's, and it, they give you, they base, uh, they give you certain scenarios on how they'll be calculated the FTE. But that's not the Florida virtual, or that's not the virtual for the high school requirement. Um, anytime a kid goes to, whether it's one class or four classes, that's the impact of the FEMP. But, the, but it's not it based on, the, on what our previous FTE uh, or our enrollment for Florida Virtual has been. I think they took into account all the children or all the students going to virtual school when they made that forecast. It's my understanding when they gave us the guidance. And there's several different scenarios on how they factor that in. Because I was going to say, that doesn't seem to jive with what I, my understanding of what we've been, our, the number of students we have in virtual or would need to have. And I'm going back of saying if. Well, they may be taking like maybe four ch kids taking one class of P. So um, that their, their calculating is 108 FTE. But I can get more clarification with this. At least because one of the things is, is every senior uh, or every sophomore. Uh, would have to take one class, one class. right? And or and then every, yeah. right. But so that's, that's why I say that number doesn't <laughs> seem quite. Good. So many and that doesn't include those students that would take it for additional classes as well. That's because, as we know, some students, like you said, take two, three, right? And that's in addition to the requirements. So that doesn't seem to. Mr. Rowland, if they take it in the summertime. It shouldn't have any impact on us, should it? No, it should not. Only DJJ gets the FT in the summer. Yeah, what I'm hearing is uh, incoming freshmen are highly encouraged to take their personal fitness or whatever that is online this summer and get that out of the way and also use it as a virtual class. So I don't know if it's all high schools and all the cantos doing that. Yeah, so I know kids that are actually doing that. Uh -oh. <laughs> we did share a flyer. It's on our website, but I believe the Mr. Mullins' direction, we actually sent a letter to all of those students who had not completed that requirement. And we again listed those. Six so not incoming freshmen. Yes. I didn't so get a letter. Should have gotten one at the Springs Middle School. It may be coming home with the uh, report cards, but I believe that was sent out. So I'll, I'll check on that. Yes. We just. And the, the other item, uh, Mr. Clark and I had a conversation with the College of Central Florida about dual enrollment classes and the payment of those classes. Uh, and we presented to you a couple weeks ago in the budget workshop. We estimated about 160,000. Through our conversation, they're not going to charge us the full tuition rate, so we estimate it to be down to about 60 or 70. $70,000, 70, so that, that forecast would come down a little bit. But you know, other districts have gone into negotiations with their junior colleges. Uh, I tried, and they were pretty adamant that was the price, and that was it. So I told Mr. Carter we'll go to Lake Sumter, but I, he told me we can't do that. So. <laughs> is, is that part of the articulation agreement requirement that we have to use the one that We have to go to our service area. That, that is our service area. In order for Unless they actually allow 
they permit. They permit, yes. So our teachers are teaching the course, and the only thing. Uh, right now, I don't believe we have any teachers. Maybe Chris River High School, but none of Citrus, none of Macanto, Chris River High School may have one or two people yeah. will teach, but they are having to go to the college now or take it online. But we have, I think, continued to increase the number of AP courses, which I wonder if they were behind the lobbying of that particular that, that, change. That's not, that's not <coughs> devious Actually, it was the junior colleges. It wasn't really because so. Yeah, it's because their funding's been cut. That's why they don't want to have any remediation anymore. They're pushing everything over to us because their funding keeps getting cut. That's why they're telling us that they have to take part in part. In high school, and they have to go through remediation in high school. We're not going to do anything, we can't afford it. Because they don't get paid by the hour like we do. They get paid or by the student. I think they get paid more like the WTI model, which is complete great. or something. It's what? It's great. Mm -hmm. It's great. <laughs> Easy to understand. Mm -hmm. That's it, man. Thanks, sir. Okay, <laughs> motion to approve the minutes. <coughs> A motion by Ms. Powers and a second by Ms. Georgeman. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Bradshaw. Thank you, sir. Ms. Powers. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Mullen. I just want to mention that we'll be meeting with the three different levels of our principals to review their data and get data. Uh, chats. Yeah. And are we going to do this on by phone or face to face? Yes. Alrighty. And they were all over the place. I've never seen such up and down. One school went up, one school went down. It didn't make any sense. It's almost like the test was on for rent. A little bit more sporadic than we used to. Yeah. I mean, it didn't look, make any wrong or reason. There were some areas that we saw a lot of growth and some areas that we saw some concerns. So. And from school to school, the skip on shoot is, is higher than usual for Citrus County. And, and you know, the other thing was very disturbing was a comment made by Tony Bennett, the Commissioner of Education, who said, well, it's obvious we have a lot of work to do, and I guess the schools put all their eggs in the end of course exam and let reading go. Well, what does the end of course in algebra have to do with third grade reading? I mean, I, but it's kind of a stupid comment. Um, because what the third grade teachers decide they weren't going to teach reading because, because the kids had to take an end of course exam in algebra in high school? I mean, why would anyone say that in the same context of the I was hoping that he might have a little bit more common sense when it came to looking at these test results and maybe understanding that they were way too random compared to previous years when something up. Uh, but he hasn't been here previously. Well, he acts like he has. Um, they all like to take responsibility when stuff goes up. I know. But um, apparently he didn't take that stand. As a teacher, I'm not a teacher's allowed to think, but uh, you have differences from year to year, but not the random differences. No, that surprises you. Think, what happened? Did we get the wrong test? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What happened? Mm -hmm. Or that was, yeah, this is like the one at one school was scored, was scored on a different scale, or they just kind of, you know, threw the, all the results out and just um, something to for somebody. Ms. Powers, do you have anything for us? Well, just uh, along those lines that with the data, um, there's two things I want to say. One is... You're not going to a data meeting tomorrow? <laughs> no, ma'am. Not okay. tomorrow. But, um, the con you know, we're transitioning from next generation Sunshine State standards to Common Core. Mm -hmm. and, and here we go that, you know, the comment to me by the commissioner that we have a lot of work to do, well... I would argue to say our teachers have been doing a lot of work, our districts have been. We're transitioning to an entire new standard, which is extremely different in its approach. Um, the state has been putting the emphasis on us of that transition to Common Core. And our teachers are having to teach one standard, learn another standard, uh, begin incorporating 
part of a standard, and yet they're going to be held to one test one year and another test another year, and they're wondering why the data is inconclusive. And, and you know, I'm just of the opinion that we have to take a step back if we're being realistic to say, you know, maybe we need to analyze how much we are putting into the data. Uh, that that may not be recognizing the gains we make. And I'm saying that again as a high performing district that knows that it isn't always all the data um, or just the selected data, but all the data that's got to be reviewed. And, and I would say to principals who I've talked to who almost have wondered, what did I do? Did I do it right? Did I approach it right? Teachers, um, I'm very proud of, in, in general, the data and to say, this is what I love about Citrus County. This is what I honor and respect and why I'm so glad my kids are in the Citrus County school system. It is not that our data is an ending point. Our data is a beginning point, and our teachers and our administrators look at that data and say, how can we use this as a map to help guide our students' instruction forward? And I just want to say I, I value what our instructional teams have done and are doing when it comes to that data, because I think that we are exceptional. And uh, I would just ask Mr. Clotter, can you throw out two or three that uh, we were in the top three in the in the state when it comes to that data? <clears throat> if you give me a minute, I will pull it out because I think that Patrick had actually alluded to that in that in that press release that uh, was sent out. Because I was going to say, I think middle school math, we are in the top three, I believe, yes. in the state. Um, I, I just above the state in all. All categories. And you know, for us, above the state is kind of like, yeah, yeah, we're, <laughs> we almost have become, that's a given for us. But I think it's where we separate ourselves along the way. So I say that the other thing that um, Mr. Bishop had mentioned about the new orientation, and I, I threw this out, um, may have been uh, sh shortly after the last one, but I, I, I just throw it out if any board members interested. I wondered if we should pick a, uh, one or two new employees or instructional ones that maybe each of us as board members kind of take and follow over the next year as they're transitioning and, and they're beginning their job and, and maybe as a, uh, to us to somewhat shadow them and just get an idea of what they're going to be going through in the next year in our school system if that provides us any insight. Um, I'm kind of, I know I, I try to do that, but it's interesting to me. I, I was thinking the other day as I've watched uh, Undercover Boss, that um, it, it's fascinating to me what we learn that's happening under the surface. And I'm, again, always amazed when I go around the summertime and I was at Lacanto. There's a lot of work going on at Lacanto on the, the roof right now. There is so much work that's happening on our campuses with our maintenance teams and our custodial teams that, and our teachers that are relocating their classrooms who kind of got you know that straw that says, oh, by the way, we need you to pack up everything because we're going to paint the room or we're going to pack up everything and move you to the other side of campus. Um, and they're there. Um, you know, I see the cars that are those that aren't getting paid. And, that, and as Ms. Deutschman has reminded us, our teachers, uh, that's pretty much what they've done because they look at themselves as professionals and uh, they do think highly of, of their jobs. So that was really good. And, and sometimes I get the feeling because it's night that uh, everyone's suited up for the football and you get a uh, little message from the state that, oh, oh by yeah. the way, you pick up your tennis racket on the way out. That's, well, that's <laughs> about right, isn't yeah. it? I was going to be teaching. <laughs> Ms. Deutschman. Um, I've been asked to co-chair the, um, the committee, the task force for um, the um, studying the standardized testing for FSBA. Yeah, so um, they probably won't like me. Um, but but uh, Mr. Mr. Clotter, I don't want to interrupt you, but 
uh, and I wish Mr. Simon was here, but when I looked at these um, test scores, especially elementary school, I was really, really disturbed. I mean, I, I've been looking at this stuff forever, and I don't remember seeing jumps up and down of 20 points from one, in one school at one grade level. For instance, um, Hernando Elementary, fourth grade math, our fifth grade math went from 73% to 48%. I mean, that's almost like, you know, that's not right. Um, and at the same time, um, some other schools uh, didn't see that big of a drop. Some schools um, went down in one area, another school went up in the same area. I mean, it really and is. Science, and some of the sciences went. Yeah. Really went in the, in the, in but the if you look at the state, the, state, the state's very level. The state is very level from year to year. As for instance, reading in fifth grade, 61 to 60 percent. We had jumps of, of 12, 15 percentage points. Um, Look at, uh, like I just mentioned, what did I, what school? Uh, Inverness, let's look at Inverness <coughs> Primary School, fifth grade math, 72% went down, 52%. It's a 20 point jump, drop. At the state level, it was a one point increase. So it's nice to compare ourselves to our state, but there's something very strange going on in Citrus County, which I don't believe we've seen before with this amount of, <coughs> of difference. <coughs> um, and some schools going down, some schools going up, and the teachers have had the same training, and are the same teachers, and it's the same kids. Um, so there's got to be something else going on here. I would, first of all, I would question the legitimacy of some of these um, test scores. They don't, Absolutely. they don't fall in line with what has been consistently very steady. You know, even you don't, you don't see those wide fluctuations in Citrus County in particular, especially at some of these schools. Um, it's almost shocking. Uh, Central Ridge, fourth grade reading, went from 82% to 68. You know, you, well, how do you explain that? Um, you can't. We're gonna have those conversations because some emphasis may have taken place in one particular content area for one particular grade. <coughs> as as was just kind of mentioned before, there's a lot of variables that come into this as far as that group that's moving through there. But that's one of the conversations we wanna try and have tomorrow as far as what they felt were some successes, what are the things that they emphasized on in regards to professional development. Was that, just like you said about that, that, that common core piece, what are some of the implementations, success makers, some of our programs that we're doing. So we try, we want to try and have those conversations tomorrow to answer some of those consistent questions. Well, I don't know if they'll know. I mean, look at writing, third grade, fourth grade writing, Pleasant Grove went from a 33 to a 62. I mean, that's almost crazy. And at the same time, uh, at Fernando, it went from 43 down to the 31, did the reverse. So those are very disturbing numbers, uh, only because they don't they don't follow the pattern of Citrus County Schools. And if we were doing some everything completely different in elementary school this year, is the only thing that would explain it. I, I, I we haven't done that. I don't believe that we have. No. So, and Patty used to be doing the old testing one. You used to be able to drill down and find exactly what the children did not know. But mm -hmm. the FCAP, no one gives you the FCAP to drill down and find out. So you're mystified. Well, so that so that lends me to the belief that I've had for many years is that you really cannot put too much faith in these scores. You know, one <laughs> day, uh, one day testing results in anomaly, so that everything pink here had more than a 10 point spread from one from one year to the next. That's a really, really unusual. Really unusual. Um, so th I think there's some thinking about if there's any causes that can, people can quantify. But at the same time, I would say to our principals in particular, don't lose a lot of sleep over this. Because, right. you know, this, this doesn't even make any sense. It really doesn't. And when they've had years in the past where the test scores have been all over the place, they finally admitted that there was some errors in the scoring, um, that there was misinterpretation as far as what kinds of things were going to be tested. Um, I know we're supposed to not teach the test, but if you don't teach the test, how are these kids ever going to pass the stupid test? They have to know what's on it. Um, um, and the state didn't seem to have those kind of fluctuations. So, you know, what can we say? Um, and I know these people take it such a heart and they're devastated when they see yes. the drops and they really, really do. It's not like I'm not taking it seriously, but after a while you just have to say, you know, come on already. 
this does, I mean, this, this is the antithesis of what Citrus County yeah. schools have always done in the past. You're right, and one of the middle schools that has performed well in the writing consistently has seen a change in that. Yeah. Year. But that's. But that to me goes back to, are they behind the scenes? And we're not gonna know the answer to this, but I'm thinking of the, the test makers and the state oh, okay. saying, are they trying to extrapolate where Common Core's going? And they are sneaking in there some of those pieces to, you know, in that, because one of the challenges that I see again is, as we've said, we don't even know really to compare how Common Core will ultimately score out because any you know model does not, it's not like when we could say, well, the model for last year, if we applied it to next year, would be. We're talking entire different ways of teaching um, with computer-based versus written-based. So there isn't going to be an easy comparison. So you know, are they playing games trying to figure that out? I'm sorry. No, that's okay. So in Sunday's New York Times, which you love reading online, <laughs> there was a, actually there was a whole section, and it was a lot of uh, editorials and articles about Common Core. And so, you know, we've been hearing smatterings from the Tea Party. And I keep thinking, what the heck is the Tea Party doing worrying about Common Core? But it's about the government direction of curriculum, uh, the homogenization and spreading of curriculum to every student in the U.S. that they think is complete overreach by the Department of Education. Um, and so that is why the Tea Party has gotten involved. And I think even locally we have Tea, tea Party members who have begun to question what is Common Core, what is it all about. I think they had, was it um, Sugar Mill Woods or somewhere, a Republican club? They also had a meeting. Republican uh, is also very strongly against the Common Core for the same reason that it's too much government, it's too much um, mandating at the state level, the federal level should not be involved in what's taught in our schools. Um, so there's a lot of conversation about that. I think it's going to start to challenge and question some of this stuff. Um, the other thing that was interesting is, you know, my friend Rick Roach, who's been the real the real um, leader of this movement, in, um, at least from uh, examining the impact See Seminole of, County? No. Oh, Orange. Orange. Orange County. Okay went to the National School Board Association meeting in San Diego this year and ran into a man who worked for Pearson and was shocked to find out that the Pearson company did not believe that Florida was using the tests as they were written for the correct purpose, that they were misusing the tests, that they were setting these, these, these test marks, the pass rates, without looking at the content. And that, so I'm, I said to him, well, did they have any guilt about taking the money for developing the tests and then allowing them to be misused by the Department of Education? Well, I think this co company is starting to question what their role is because they're getting a lot of negative publicity. And this is an international company. They develop testing in, in Great Britain and, and, and other countries where they're almost the exclusive writer of tests. And those kinds of things are being challenged in other countries as well. And are starting to take a look at their corporate philosophy in do we continue to be a vendor for a state that will purposely misuse and misalign our tests as they're written, use them as they were not intended. So this guy was sort of mid-level upper management. He was out of Washington, D.C. He flew down to Orlando and met with I was invited last week, but I was out of town, Rick Roach and two other people, to talk about this whole testing ideology and where they, where they stand in it. So Rick Roach says, okay, so we have to now say Pearson's not the bad guy in all this. So I'm not sure if this guy was a great PR guy or whether he was really being upfront with um, that this company's own uh, trouble in allowing their tests to be painted so negatively, as, as they're the ones that are promoting and pushing these kinds of things that result in these kinds of test scores that are completely unusable and irrelevant. And you know, the thing that's frustrating about these is when we would have our CBATs, our FAIR testing, I know the teachers would sit down and say, did we ask the right question? Did, you know, when we asked it or you know what that was a bad question so they all didn't learn so they would they would analyze 
It tore out the, the back buttons, and they would, too. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so then that would be kind of, you know, that would be reflected on. Well, it's against the law for our teachers to find out what the questions are and to see what the, our students are asked, so they can't know whether did they teach them that information. So you if know, you get drilling down, you can't even do anything. You can't. And, and that becomes that, you know, the, the idea of teaching to the test. And my, my answer has always been, if the test measures what we want them to learn, then that's fine. But we don't even know what you we're doing. You have to be able to deliver a test of material that you have the opportunity to teach. Absolutely. If you haven't, what good is a test? The test you on something else that you didn't teach? What does that have to do with anything? So this whole, this whole thing about calling the teachers to the test wrong, if you don't do it, you're not doing your job. Because you have to be able to be responsible for those kids learning. But anyway, so, um, so, so Mr. Collar, I know Mr. Simon's not here, I don't know if you've had a chance to actually look at all this stuff. Um, have, you, have we seen an increase in level ones in, in reading in third grade? Yes. That, that, I think, that has been identified as far as an increase. By how much do you know? No. Uh, I think we're going to go over this, I believe it's in the July um, State of the District. Yeah. Is that? Well, the, yeah, probably. But, you know, in the meantime, there's not a lot of kids, more kids at risk. And we don't have ninth and 10th grade back yet. Is that right? No, ninth and 10th uh, reading is back. Oh, it is? Not yes, ma'am. Down, down Oh, here it grade. is. Yes, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Up in 10th. Right. Right. So now we're back to... Um, 50% of the ninth graders and 56% of the 10th graders. So almost half of our 10th graders are at risk of not graduating from high school because they didn't get a level three on reading. We can't do that a little better. Um, but that's unacceptable. You know, that's an unacceptable number. It's not unacceptable because our kids can't read. It's unacceptable that that's where the level of passing is set at. You know, we should be seeing easily 70% of our kids probably passing without um, requirement for the extra remediation, right? Wouldn't you think that would be at least probably? But they set it purposely at a lower, they can set it wherever they want. But that's where that's where the target range is, 50 to 60% pass rate. And that's where they're saying, oh, they have course exams. Ooh, look at how well they're doing. Well, not so much second semester instead of first semester. And that also the geometry was set. Actually, I'm a little surprised because geometry was set, I think, about 55% pass rate from, um, from last year. Mm -hmm. um, so that's my diatribe of the day. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Deutschman. Um, I need to make a presentation. I have five minutes. Okay. I think I can do it. Dear Linda B. Powers, congratulations on receiving your 20-year service recognition pin. We wish to thank you for your service to the education profession and specifically to the Citrus County School Board. The work you do and the impact you have is immeasurable. Through your hard work, commitment, and dedication, you have made many vital contributions to the success of the Citrus County School Board. Once again, congratulations on reaching this career milestone and thank you for the many contributions you make to the success of our school district.
Okay. So I'm going to the Florida School Works Association all alone. Well, not alone. My husband's going with me. Apparently, you are. Uh, we're like, you're not going to be here either. <laughs> no. I know you are. I know you are. But I'm going to bring back a truckload of stuff for you guys to read. I'm sure. Um, compass Bank in Inverness. Okay. Now, how, uh, uh, Mr. Moore, were you able to determine the what they were raising money for for Jacob to go to LA? Yeah, to go to the company. But I mean, the art, uh, we weren't paying for the whole thing? No, they, they raised quite a bit of it. This was. Uh, how much are they short? Do they know? I think the mall told me they're trying to get. Close to $300 yeah. short of their goal. Yeah, I think. Okay. So if we, can we, um, can we each donate like something? Yeah, I was going to say, I don't have a problem if we wanted to divide it up and do it. It'd be fine. Works for me. Yeah. Mathematician said Can we? I just don't have a check. I thought, we, I was just going to say, <laughs> I thought we should give him some money. Will we be able to keep it? If we, if we each, if we each donate something, will we be able to well, if we give you the checks, or if somebody can check. Oh, okay. Can we just take half of Jacob Reynolds? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I am out of checks. I said the checks will be made full. They have it right here. So yeah, I'll give you a check one day. Yes, thank you. Don't let me forget to pay you back. And I'll get mine now by the car. Okay. Um, that is such a terrific. Thank you for thinking about that. Well, uh, thank you for suggesting that we all know each other. Yes. So we'll let him know that. He's met his goal and we have surpassed I it. Smiles. I know. I, I asked him if he would help me uh, lead the Pledge of Allegiance. He just looked at me and I said, his mom was our teacher. And they were both looking at me and I said, what does that mean? Are you nervous? And he said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, I was really nervous. Well, I would never have told Mr. Clotter that you wanted him to do that. And he, Mr. Clotter, let me check, let me check. <laughs> okay. I asked him all for so at 5.30, we have We have citizens' comments at 5:30. Are there any citizens that would like to address the board? I'm one minute early. I'm sorry. I would buy on help card filled out. Right there behind you. Green cards. Okay. It's, it's speak and then fill out your card. Come up and tell us your name. My name's Kay Harding. I'm from Inverness Middle School. I'm sorry, I'm late. I was in a workshop in Sumner County. And I just got in off the road. And it's a really good workshop. It, ta it talks about t uh, assessing. So you guys might want to take that workshop. But if we get trained, it might help you with FCAP or whatever that was you were discussing. Anyway, what I'm here for today, I am coming through um, <clears throat> on this issue from a PBS standpoint, positive behavior support, and it is concerning teacher morale in our building. I understand that our um, date for parents to come in and meet the teacher when we come back to school is a day after we come back to work our rooms are not going to be ready for a lot of our teachers. So I would like to ask if the board, I, I don't know who made this recommendation. I tried to take it through channels in our school and nobody's gotten back to me yet. So I'm coming to the board because <laughs> I'm assuming it's from here. But I would like to no. I hate it when people make that assumption. <laughs> No. no, we didn't cut your pay and we didn't make that rule. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just so we're clear, okay? <laughs> and we didn't fire your media special. You guys did good on that too, by the way. Okay, well, I don't know who to, I don't know who to come to for this. Would it be the principals? principals? The principals set those dates based on... Like the middle school principals would get together and decide... 
so that they didn't have the same. I was just gonna say, I think the only conversation we ever had was that we were trying to do it so that we didn't have, like, <clears throat> the same night have elementary and middle, if we could have those on different nights. And I totally understand that. I had three children yeah. and three I was just gonna say, yeah, and that was exactly it. But I know, because I think my wife's is the same thing. She's got hers the next day, and I kind of got reamed out for it. And I'm like, I didn't do it. What's in me? Okay. We didn't do it. Okay. Well, I just need to know where to we go. We didn't do it. Just need to know where to go. I'm, I'm just asking for some direction. I don't know where to go to get it taken care of. Say, Ms. Trish. Pardon me? Ms. Douglas. Well, I'm, I was going through my liaison, who is Mr. Darby, and that was a week ago, and I haven't heard from him, but I don't know if he's out on vacation, and I'm in a workshop all week this week, and I'm kind of not connecting dots here. Okay. But anyway, it, it's a concern that middle school teachers have. Uh, we're not going to be ready. We're just not going to be ready. Not for what the expectation is. If I was a parent and I'm going in, I don't want to see boxes sitting in my kid's room. I want to see a room that's ready to go, that's going to welcome my child in. Mm -hmm. So that's my concern, and it's about teacher morale through PBS, not union, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, your, uh, your whole school, the, you know, I go, we, we go by some of those FCATs, but I saw some really exciting things happening at, with IMS, and I couldn't help but be really excited for you all, because I know that there's been a lot of efforts there. And, and, right, we've um, got a great staff. Just, you know, kudos and congrats, and, um, and, and even when you don't have the good ones, or ones that we scratch our heads about, then I'm, I'm just, I'm with Ms. Uh, with Ms. Uh, uh, Deutschman that, uh, you know, we, we got to not overemphasize on that, but the ones that we know that are working. Because I think a lot of the strategies that I saw IMS is doing, I, I, I think a lot of data was showing those strategies. So, okay. great job. So you guys don't have any just suggestions on where I go from here? I would miss Douglas. 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 Okay. If she goes like this, then you got problems. <laughs> <laughs> the middle school principals made that decision. So okay. Goes As a group. Then, then, then blame the other middle school because that's probably what she'll do. I wonder if they got their dates based on elementary school and high school's open houses as well. Or and we also didn't help with the calendar because of when we did it. We shorted a day at the beginning of the year. Oh, it's your and fault. I, you have the calendar command. Uh, but it wasn't my calendar they okay. chose. <laughs> so it's me. Uh, so where do I come to help you move boxes? Because that's probably, and I'm not kidding. If you call me and it's not the day I have to move my wife's boxes, I'll come and help you move yours. The middle school principals have agreed to minimize the amount of time they're out of their classroom that first day. And are you going to do a bulletin boards as well? Oh yeah. Okay, thank you. There you I, have it. I have my laser that I in my glue gun. Whoever didn't hear that I didn't use a glue gun. Since you're an expert, you come our way too. Yes, ma'am. Just go. send me an email. All right. Do we have anything else that needs to come before the board? Have a good trip, Jeff. Thank you. Safe trip. All right. This meeting is adjourned. Okay. Mr. Bishop sent you a list. Board members of Thank you. I don't have time for my reply. I'll show you. It's actually the Thank you.